Here's the setup for a little thermite experiment. I have a cup made of refractory that has about a quarter inch hole in the bottom. And I've made a uh, roughly knife shaped mold by carving into a hard fire brick. I'm going to put some thermite into the cup, set the cup over the mold, set the thermite off, and uh, we'll see what happens. Here's a look at the thermite, its igniters, the mold, and my crucible with hole in the bottom filled with thermite. I should point out that this thermite isn't the uh, reddish colored military thermite. This is welder's thermite, which is completely different. Uh, the reaction is nowhere near as vigorous and more uh, liquid metal is produced. Notice this thermite is a grayish color rather than a reddish color. This thermite also contains uh, bits of steel so that it'll form a good weld. Here's a look at the setup. Uh, the igniter's in place. Uh, everything's ready. At the last second, I changed my setup slightly. I've lifted the crucible up about half an inch with some pieces of gravel, just to give a little more room, hopefully, for the thermite to dribble out. I have no idea if this will work or not, or even if my crucible is good enough, but let's light it off and find out. Here we go. Thermite is starting. Something obviously came out the bottom, but this is incredibly hot, even. Uh, from 15 feet away, you can feel the heat coming off it. Let's just let this cool down. It looks like it may have overfilled the mold, but whatever, we'll see. Since I used a fair amount of thermite here, I'm not going to even think of trying to cool things down with water. Absolutely do not need a steam explosion. I can still see a dull red heat, but things have cooled down some. So let's see if the crucible can be moved off the fire brick mold. No, it can't. Still a little hot to mess with, uh, now the disintegrated crucible's off there. I'll let it cool probably for a good half hour, and then uh, we'll examine the result. Here's the remains of the crucible that I picked up in a stainless steel basket. Certainly no reusing this one again, but uh, it did work and channel the thermite out that little hole, so I'm happy for that. Some thermite dribbled out onto the ground and melted its way into uh, the gravel. In a minute I'll try and separate this messy looking slab of it from the fire brick mold and flip it over. Okay, let's take the pliers and screwdriver to this.
Well, I did get some kind of a result here. Let's just finish cooling it with a little water now that it's nearly completely cooled down. Get it inside and get a close-up uh, view of it. Only two things survived. The casting itself and the soft fire brick that I was using as a base. The mold fire brick completely uh, shattered into several pieces. Here's a look at the cooled off casting sitting on the bench. It didn't quite get it fully formed. I'm missing a bit of guard on that side, but oh well. Let's uh, chip the slag off and uh, see what it looks like. In the parts of the mold that the thermite reached, I got a half-decent casting for the very simple setup I use. I think in the next thermite video I might uh, use a two-part cope and drag sand mold and uh, see if the thermite will flow into that and form a more proper looking casting. This sort of succeeded, enough to encourage me to try it again with the proper mold. Just a quick look at the sparks that come off when grinding. Here's the casting with a wee bit of grinding done on it. Uh, not a hundred percent successful, but enough to encourage me to try this again uh, using a proper cope and drag sand mold. I hope you found this uh, little video interesting. If so, please like and subscribe, and there'll be plenty more to come.